Good evening. You're watching the news at 7.30 on ATV. I'm Raymond Yeung. And I'm Edna Zhe. Here's a look at tonight's top stories. Chief executive says government will have to start from scratch if reforms voted down. Pan-Democrats tour city promoting their opposition to the reform package. Floyd Mayweather defeats many Pacquiao on points in fight of the century. Just the Secretary Rimsky Yun said today he hopes lawmakers can vote on the government's political reform package before Lechko's summer break. Yun was at campaigning, as was Chief Executive Lan Chengying, who warned the Pan Democrats that it will, back, will be back to square one if they veto the package. Chief Executive Lan Chengying was out today without informing the media, handing out leaflets to the public at the flower market in Mong Kok. Leung was seen taking photos with people and a woman asked for his autograph. Time is running out as the political reform proposal, which is expected to be tabled to LegCo in June, needs two-thirds of lawmakers to vote for it to be passed. But pan-democrats have vowed to veto the package, saying it is not real universal suffrage. Leung took to the airwaves today and urged the pan-democrats not to veto the plan. Speaking on RTHK's letter to Hong Kong, Leung warned that if the proposal is vetoed, the government will have to start from scratch. If the proposal is voted down to restart the process, everything and everyone will be back to square one. The next chief executive, if agrees, will have to trigger the five-step process again. He would have to secure the approval of the National People's Congress Standing Committee, the NPCSC, again and lobby LegCo members again. Are we sure that the next chief executive will agree? Are we sure that the then NPCSC will approve? Furthermore, who can say when the next opportunity to start this process will be? Leung also questioned why the pan-democrats are so eager to vote it down. It is puzzling why the pan-democrats are pushing back. It is more puzzling why they have not offered any alternative that complies with the basic law. They seem to have abandoned civic nomination, which they insisted on having during the Occupy Central movement. So what are our differences? Leung added that the earliest time for universal suffrage for LegCo will be nine years from now if the package is rejected. We are also talking about the universal suffrage for all LegCo members. Since NPCSC has stated that LegCo may be returned by universal suffrage only after implementing universal suffrage for the chief executive. If the proposal is rejected, then the earliest time to have universal suffrage for LegCo will be 2024. Just as Secretary Rimsky Yun was in Aberdeen this morning promoting the proposal. Yun said no matter how diverse the ideas are towards the proposal, it will be tabled in LegCo on schedule before the summer break. Yun also said he understands there are different opinions and views on the proposal, but hopes people can use rational and pragmatic ways to express their views. Yun's comments come a day after health chief Koeng Man lost his temper after a man heckled him and accused him of being a liar while he was out promoting the proposal in Kowloon Bay. Meanwhile, former LegCo president and member of the NPC Standing Committee, Rita Fan, hopes there will be a last-minute change by the pan-democrats. Maybe there will be some last-minute change, but I personally have no evidence or any reason to believe that this change will happen. So it may not happen. Um, and if it doesn't happen, and the uh, pan-democrats uh, are so determined, as we see today, to vote down uh, the um, proposal, then I guess we just would not be able to uh, elect our chief executive through universal franchise in 2017. That would be most regrettable, but um, facts are facts. Pan-democratic lawmakers also took to the streets today to promote their opposition to the government's political reform package. They once again vowed to veto the proposal. Hey, 
Can Democratic lawmakers gathered in Taikok Cho this morning to publicize their action against the government's political reform package? They shouted slogans and made speeches vowing not to pocket the proposal. Then they boarded vehicles and drove to Mong Kok, Shum Shui Po and Chun Wan, where they got out of the cars to hand out leaflets to passers-by. But some people didn't seem to care about their action. Today's publicity drive comes a week after government ministers toured the city on an open-top bus to drum up support for the proposal. But the officials never got off the bus due to rowdy pan-democrat protesters and some stops along the route. Well, we will do the best we can to explain to every Hong Kong citizen that we come across why they should not pocket the government proposal, which is uh, restrained. Leung also accused Chief Secretary Carrie Lam of trying to lure them into supporting the proposal by considering changes to the electoral method under the framework made by Beijing. The new Mandatory Provident Fund Authority Chairman David Wong says he doesn't support abolishing the controversial offsetting mechanism. He also insisted MPF management fees and returns are fair. Marcus Chi reports. The current law allows employers to offset long service payments and severance payments with MPF savings. That's a rule that's been widely criticized as unfair as it drains an employee's retirement savings and defeats the whole purpose of the MPF. It's also been seen as a stab in the back to workers after years of loyal service. But on television this morning, new MPF chief David Wong didn't appear to have a problem with it. He said abolishing the mechanism may not be the ideal solution and instead called for mutual understanding between employers and employees so they can develop common ground. This mechanism has been in place for many years, even before the MPF began, he said, insisting there's a good reason for introducing offsetting but not saying what it was. His views are the opposite of his predecessor, Anna Wu. In an interview in March, she said 94 percent of employers take advantage of the offsetting loophole to avoid paying long-serving staff what many of them deserve. The people who are the most affected are those earning the least, workers getting less than $7,100 a month, which means they basically have no retirement protection. Wong also believes that MPF management fees are acceptable and have decreased from 2.1 percent in 2007 to 1.6 percent this year. He also said MPF returns are reasonable, the annual return being 4.3 percent, which is more than the 1.8 percent inflation. But critics argue that there's no real retirement protection, and some have been lobbying for a universal retirement pension scheme. Hong Kong has lost billions of dollars worth of MPF during the last financial crisis. Marcus Chi, ATV News. Overseas, North Korean leader Kim Jong-un has declared his country's right to peaceful space development. But first, in a roundup of international news, curfews continue in the U.S. city of Baltimore. Ben Rook reports. Protest marches have turned to victory parades on the streets of Baltimore as thousands angry about the death of a black man in police custody are now hoping for change after criminal charges were made against six officers. Civil rights activist R. Sharpton welcomed the charges over the death of Freddie Gray but said more needs to be done as police brutality is a nationwide problem in the U.S. The media won't say that. We are not fighting black and white. We're fighting right and wrong. Baltimore police are still enforcing a curfew following rioting and looting, but businesses complain that the policy is destroying them. It's been devastating. Um, you know, we've lost tens of thousands of dollars. But, what I, you know, I worry about my employees. I mean... Most of our business is from 6 o'clock on. Critics argue the reports of looting have been exaggerated by authorities to divert attention away from widespread poverty and police brutality in Baltimore. Residents of the eastern Ukraine city of Donetsk paid tribute to dozens of people killed in clashes and a fire in Odessa a year ago. At least 48 people were killed and over 200 injured when Ukrainian soldiers backed by right-wing militants tried to take the city back from pro-Russia rebels. The rebels accused the militants of deliberately starting the fire. Rebel leader Alexander Zakachenko said he believes those responsible for the deaths in Odessa will be punished.
North Korean television has aired photographs of leader Kim Jong-un inspecting a newly built satellite control center. In the photos, Kim is seen looking around the Situation Room and checking miniatures of the country's rockets. The news report quoted Kim as saying peaceful space development is a legitimate right of North Koreans and something they will never give up on, no matter who opposes it. He added that satellites will be launched into space in the future. The location of the control center and date of the inspection were not revealed. Ben O'Rourke, ATV News. The Duke and Duchess of Cambridge showed off the new baby girl to the crowds outside the London hospital where she was born. The princess's name could be revealed later tonight. Marcus Chi reports. Prince William, Duke of Cambridge and his wife Kate introduced to the public the first time their second child, wrapped in a white shawl and bonnet. They waved to the cheering crowd as Kate cradled the sleeping princess but did not answer questions. The baby girl was born yesterday evening at St Mary's Hospital in London where her father was born to the late Princess Diana in 1982. William later brought along the baby's brother George. The royal baby is fourth in line to the throne, behind her brother, her father Prince William and grandfather Prince Charles. The couple later drove the baby home to Kensington Palace, where they expected to get a visit from the Queen in a few days. Squabbling politicians took a break from their campaigns ahead of next week's general election and sent their best wishes to the latest member of the royal family. Well, I would like to congratulate the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge uh, on the fantastic news. I know the whole country will be wishing them uh, incredibly well. London landmarks were lit up with colours to celebrate. Marcus Chi, 